guys, so I got up really early one morning and filmed to get ready with me. I was trying to make some sense and make some points, but I don't think any editing in the world could really fix a lot of my early morning ramblings, but there are some good ideas in there, so kind of bear with me. But other than that, I hope you enjoy this get ready with me. See you soon. Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stephanie with Chubby Girl in the World and my hair is insane today. Um, I finally, for once in my life, got up early enough that I've been wanting to film like a get ready with me and I thought I got a new palette, which I wasn't supposed to get, but I did. And so I'm gonna do a look with the e.l.f. Um, Earth and Ocean palette today. And I love blue eyeshadow, so we're gonna try them out. And I'm gonna do a work appropriate colorful look. So if you don't work in a super corporate environment where you really have to wear neutrals all the time, even if you did, uh, even if you work in a corporate environment where you have to wear neutrals all the time, there's actually a really pretty taupe here and a really pretty gold and then another neutral here. So this is like a half neutral, half colorful palette in my opinion. And I'm super excited. So um, I just want, wanted to get ready with you guys on camera and just do like a chatty get ready with me. Oh my god, my hair. I promise I'm going to fix my hair before I go outside. Um... I am using the CeraVe Facial Moisturizing Lotion with Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So before you put on any makeup, you should be putting on a sunscreen. Now I prefer mineral sunscreens, but I think I was like out traveling or something and I like just ran out of sunscreen and I needed one and like this was all they had at CVS like they did not have a mineral one um I, I can't remember where we were but there just wasn't a lot of choice and you need sunscreen every day before you go outside uh you should probably put it on at least oh what is that uh you should put it on at least 30 minutes before you're gonna go out into the sun or outside, even in places like where I live in Oregon where there's tons of cloud cover, you still need SPF. Like, don't don't think that you don't, you do. And even those like kind of uh, powder SPFs, the like kind of little shaker ones, that's not enough. It's not, it doesn't put down enough of a, of a base. You need to apply a sunscreen. You need to apply a sunscreen. Like mel melanoma is real, y'all. So uh, I've got my coffee. I've got my SPF on. I'm just gonna let it sit for a second. It really is better if you like once you rub it in, like just let it kind of stick and like kind of sink into your skin. And I just want to talk to you guys about um, here on YouTube, if you don't know, Lily Singh, who has her own channel, and she's also known as Superwoman. I am a super fan. I'm hashtag team super fan, or hashtag team super. I love Lily Singh so much. I think she's an amazing role model. I think she's just a proponent of mental health. I think she is someone who is doing just so much for people of color, for women, and just kind of breaking down those barriers while being really funny and entertaining about it. And I think there's an amazing, I think she does, she talks about real issues in a really funny way that sort of get to people, they kind of break through that barrier. Like I can sit here and, you know, do a 45 minute TED talk about wage gaps and, you know, the, the arguments like, about like some people argue that there isn't a wage gap at all because women self-select into like lower paying jobs but I could go on and on about that but that'd be really boring right but she has a video called workout wage cap and it's hilarious and it kind of really um breaks the ice into that conversation and so you are I think my camera is crooked yep camera was crooked sorry um I really just love her sense of humor. I love the way that she is able to, I just, I love the way that she talks about serious issues um, through the lens of comedy. I think comedy is truth. And I think that's, she's an amazing entertainer. You should definitely go check out her show. Uh, she has a show on NBC now called A Little Late with Lily Singh. I don't have 
like network cable anymore so I just have YouTube so I watch her channel on YouTube uh, I am subscribed I'm super excited about her and like her journey and I just I love it I her book how to be a boss like b-a-w-s-e just amazing I even bought the lipstick that she made with Smashbox and so um which was pretty good the pretty good even though I had like a bad experience like in the place I bought it um but that wasn't like Smashbox's fault and it definitely wasn't Lily Singh's fault so yeah I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit while I do my makeup about you know what YouTube and what social media has done for voices that wouldn't normally get heard so I'm gonna take my concealer brush and my angel eyes primer and prime my eyes and then we're gonna get into this we're gonna get into this so um, I'll talk a little bit about the makeup but I'm not gonna talk about like everything so I definitely let me grab a mirror so I don't have to use the bare minerals mirror so I definitely don't think that um, I don't know if a show like Lily Singh's show would exist without the advent of social media and YouTube. And the reason I say that is because it provides, social media provides proof of concept for a brand. Like social media provides proof that there's an audience. So Lily Singh had millions of subscribers, like people who watched her content before she got a show. And, you know, normally that's not the the case you like all the other late night hosts like Seth Meyers and Jimmy Fallon and those guys they were all on uh like Seth Meyers was a lead writer on Saturday Night Live and you know those are really big accomplishments those are people who definitely worked really really hard to get where they are and get the audience they have but they aren't people who like like when they did that they didn't have proof of concept that they could carry a show like it was always a question like well can this person carry a show and that's you know probably the question that every uh producer executive producer has when they do uh you know because it's a lot of money to like hire those people get studio time do all that stuff so you want proof of concept but I don't think that there would have been as much opportunity for Lily if she hadn't had a huge built-in audience already. And I think like that's even the, that's kind of like the problem, right? Is that there are people who, there are certain kinds of people who are not given, um, I'm taking the color Oasis, so I'm going to take this color and put it all over the lid. Um, so there are people who are, you know, have opportunities that maybe other people wouldn't normally get. Um, oh wow, this is showing up darker on the eyes than I thought it would, but that's okay. So people who just normally wouldn't get those opportunities, um, because they're not as relatable um which is code for they're not white and male there's a train going by so always the man trying to silence me so um uh, no it's just a train <laughs> it's not that deep <laughs> but um yeah I, I think that there's definitely more there's more space and more room and people are more willing to take a take a chance on a known formula. And so, I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense that like studios don't want to take a risk on a new thing. Like they don't want to take a risk on a new type of show because well, Johnny Carson and uh, you know, Jay Leno and all those, those are tried and true formulas and we should, you know, we're just going to stick to those because we know that's what makes us money. We know that's what brings in the advertising dollars. Well, here's the problem with that is that 
those people benefited from a like basically in a cor- not I'm not I'm not going to say a corrupt system because I don't know for sure that it's corrupt but basically a system that favors certain people over others and the reason it's a tried and true formula is because no one else was ever given no other type of person was ever given the opportunity right so that's how they come to that conclusion so it's basically a self-fulfilling prophecy that okay well we aren't going to uh put in you know we're not we're not going to take a chance on an unknown or somebody different because we don't know that they're going to make money well like cue the power of social media right so the power of social media is that lily built that audience on her own um i'm gonna take the color siren right here it's this really pretty like kind of duochromey purple and put that on my lid so it'll all come together you'll see um, I'm gonna try it first without any setting spray and see how that works. So, ooh, I actually really like it. Um, so, see? So, cue the power of social media where you already have that built-in audience and you already have that proof of concept. So you're already, you know, you can go to a studio and say, well, you might not have you know, I've already done the work and put in the work and have a built-in audience. And so I know I can attract advertising dollars because this is my AdSense revenue. And the, you know, this is my demographic. These are the analytics I have. This is, this is who I'm appealing to. And so I feel like because of social media, because of those platforms, we might see a lot more people getting opportunities a lot a lot of different voices a lot of varying voices uh, people who look different who reflect actual society instead of just one flavor and don't get me wrong I like vanilla I do but I don't just want vanilla you know what I mean and like, again, like, that's no shade to anybody who, like, the Jimmy Fallons and the Seth Meyers of the world, they worked really hard to get where they are. Like, there's no shade towards them. It's just that I feel like they were given more of a benefit of a doubt than, say, someone like Lily Singh would be given. Like, she basically, she had to take on the Steve Martin model. Like, Steve Martin's famous for saying, be so good that they can't ignore you. And I feel like you should be that way in anything you do. Like, you should adopt that model and just be the best possible, like, oh, okay, so I got some fallout right here and it looks like I bruised myself. So let's see how easy the fallout is to brush away. Okay, it's still there, but that's okay. We're gonna put foundation and concealer over it, so meh. <laughs> But I don't know if you can see, see how pretty that is? It's like a really like light lavender color. And I'm glad because I really wanted the uh, lilac the monochromatic palette from, uh, from ColourPop. But for some reason ColourPop only made like one monochromatic palette that I really wanted that was vegan, which is the Just My Luck palette. I don't understand like if they can make the green one vegan why can't they just make all of them vegan I don't okay that's neither here nor there um but what I am uh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little tiny Luxie mini flat angled brush and go into this beautiful navy color called abyss to smoke out the outer corners so um to smoke out the outer V so yeah I just think that there's a ton more um, like I said I just there's no shade to those people they worked really really hard to get where they are and I I applaud them for that like that's you know but I feel like some I feel like sometimes people don't acknowledge their privilege and they don't um, 
like they themselves probably do and like Seth Meyers I think in particular has gone out of his way to give voice to more like diverse opinions and voices like uh I love Amber Ruffian like Amber Ruffian is probably one of my favorite comedians um she's just one of the most talented and funny writers and she's just amazingly cute and I love it um she's got her Amber says what like segment on Seth Meyers like it's a running segment and I just I absolutely love it and um I need to clean all of this up we're gonna clean it up I promise Ugh. what is happening so so I'm taking a clean uh, brush this is the urban decay brush that was in my naked heat palette and I'm going in and making a mess that's what I'm doing I'm making a mess okay so there was sh I was like why is it getting all muddy you know why because there was shadow on this brush it wasn't a clean brush um, Take my color switch here yeah so uh, I do think that there are people who are do have you know a voice and they have privilege and they are constantly working to give other people opportunities and b because they know how hard it is to break in even when you are part of a privileged class like it's really really hard like for every Seth Meyer how many um I don't know like I, I don't know their names so you know how many people are trying to be Seth Meyer but you know just can't be and so you have to consider that so there is if you're going to use this palette, I really would suggest doing your eye makeup first because I am getting some fallout, but that could be user error on my part where I just packed on too much. Um, that could be it too. So I usually smoke out my eye look like just a little past this corner here because I wear glasses. If you don't wear glasses, you might want to put it in a little bit like uh, closer to, to your actual eye. But, you know, I don't want to hide everything with my glasses, so. Okay, so that's the look so far. I'm going to add liner. Uh, I'm going to use the Tart, the Tartist double thingy. It's the one that has, I think I'm going to use the pencil side. This is the one that has a eyeliner pencil on one side and the eyeliner, like, felt tip on the other. But yeah, I'm always happy to see new voices being heard, new opportunities being given to people who, you know, have not been traditionally represented in the past. Um, and I feel like this is going to be controversial, but I feel like men of color are more often given more often given opportunities before women of color are. So for example, so Hassan Banaj, who is a great comedian and I love his show. His show is so good, like don't get me wrong. But Hassan Banaj, when you look at the number of eyes that are on Lily Singh and the number of eyes that were on Hassan Minaj, like Lily Singh wins out way way over like her name recognition and she has a super built-in audience like all around the world and she's somebody who's known worldwide and she's she's a global superstar and I love that she's someone who is humble I love that she's someone who stays hungry I love that she's someone who goes after what she wants and I think that that's fantastic. But I think that sometimes... <sighs> so here's the best example of this. In some subway systems, the voice that like tells you, the voice that tells you what train station is coming up next, like 
where you are, where you're going, like basically giving you information, that's a woman's voice. In an emergency, if you have to exit the train, a man's voice comes on and tells you that there's an emergency and you need to exit the train. Why is that? Because they did studies. People will take information from a female voice, but they will only take direction from a male's voice seriously. So when they tried using a female voice that told people to get off the train because there was an emergency, people didn't listen. And luckily this was like during a drill. And so had there been a real emergency, people's internalized misogyny would have gotten them killed. And I'm not going to say that I'm not guilty of a similar thing because there are some YouTubers that I really like their content. I really like what they're doing. I really do. But the sound of their voice. And the thing is that's like so petty and stupid of me because like you can't you can't help what your voice sounds like. like you're just born with your voice sounding that way. And also I say like every other word, so who the hell am I to talk about the way someone talks? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I'm, I'm a garbage person. So, but I'm very particular about intonation, like nasalness of a person's voice, whether that's a man or a woman. So that is a thing to my credit. So if you're like a, if you're a male, sorry, there was like a, a notification because I film on my phone because I don't have a camera. So even if there's like a, I watch a lot of male, uh, it's funny, like a lot of the skincare videos I watched are by like men. I um, don't know why. But there's certain people I can't watch and like I'm not going to name them because that's stupid and mean. But and because it's it's a me problem. It's not a them problem. They didn't do anything wrong. They're on the internet trying to give me information. Like, what the hell's wrong with me? But there are some people that I just, I can't watch. They're unwatchable for me because they are just the, the way that they speak is too, oh my God, I was trying to push this up. <gasps> I've almost panned this side. So the way that they speak is just a little too grading like it sounds like nails on a chalkboard to me and you know what my voice might do that to some people it's such a weird thing it's such a weird thing a weird human thing that we do uh, but again here's the difference though is I know that that's a me problem that's not a them problem also I would never go on the interwebs and like Oh my gosh. Uh oh. Mm. Okay, just total side note, this just happened. This tip here, I tried like pushing it up. There's no more product left to push up, but then I tried retracting it down. Won't retract down. It's loose in here. <laughs> so, not super happy about that, but. I do like the way my liner came out. Um, oh, so here's the thing that I won't do. I won't go on the internet and tell someone and like write out a super mean comment telling someone, uh, oh, by the way, this is the Ofra Coolest Cucumber Primer. Um, I won't go on the internet and tell someone, oh, hey, uh, I, your videos are unwatchable. I don't like your voice. Like, I would never tell someone that because again, if you feel that way, don't watch the video. Like, just don't. Or if you don't like somebody's makeup, then okay, you're not wearing it. Like, you don't, like, that doesn't need to be a thing that you say. And whatever. Like, recently, if you follow my Instagram you'll see that somebody tried to start like beef with me on Instagram because I pointed out they said a palette like was mostly or said it was like all matte 
and I was like actually I think there's shimmers in this palette and then there was like for some reason they found that offensive um if you, you can't handle the truth lady but anyway and then they made like a silly math mistake and I pointed it out and they like just did never say anything again so anywho <laughs> am I petty for mentioning that yes did it bother me yes you can say whatever you want about me or my makeup but don't mess with math don't mess with math lady obviously so people will sit there and try and tell you that you know women aren't funny or women can't do this or women can't do that or that you know well it's just not you know no one's interested in a woman's point of view really because we're half the population like I am and you are because you're here watching there are 50 people or almost 50 people like 48 49 people watched my videos and said you know what I want to talk to this person I want to hear what they have to say you're probably here for fashion which is cool um, like we can totally be friends and like I love clothes and I love talking about plus size fashion and body positivity and all that stuff and I am I'm here for you like I am I'm here for that conversation I'm here for that I'm here messing up my foundation people who will say well you know women just aren't as relatable as men it's like what there's half the population more than half the population is women and this is where I think social media has a really big impact where we should we shouldn't have to but we can prove that there's a built-in audience for women driven content for women driven entertainment to address the concerns and issues and just like the everyday lives of women like we have jobs we have careers and so I was at a job interview yesterday was in the waiting room and you know waiting for my turn to be interviewed and this um, magazine called cottages and bungalows or something and it was talking about like decorating a uh, oh if I didn't say the foundation I'm using is the Pacifica a light clean foundation I really really love this but I think I'm gonna have to get it in a lighter color um, because this was my summer color and it's a little too dark for me right now so I have to kind of sheer it out so uh, and then I use the this is my new favorite concealer the conceal and define um, I still have the elf one that I need to pan but it's like so thick that I don't think that's gonna ever like happen and so I was in the waiting room and I was reading this magazine called cottages and bungalows because if you don't know I love love interior design I have no eye for it I have no talent for it whatsoever but I love watching other people do it like I love I used to love HGTV when I had cable I just don't have cable anymore and um Shout out to the, uh, to the twins, to, uh, oh my god, what are their names? I don't remember their names. The Property Brothers. The Property Brothers are amazing. I love them. They're super sweet. Um, I think that they're good peeps. So, anyways, also JV Smoove was at one of their weddings, which I think, or was that Jonathan? Not Jonathan, the other one. What's the other one's name? I don't remember. Jonathan's the hot one even though they're twins, I don't know. He's like the cute lumberjacky one. So anyway, I was in the waiting room looking at that magazine and it was talking about like how to decorate um, like a girl's bedroom and then a boy's bedroom. And the girl's bedroom was like really cute, kind of shabby chic. Um, it would have been a bedroom that I would have loved. I would have loved as a kid, like a shabby chic kind of like French inspired bedroom. And that's cool like that's you know kind of travel inspired and you know I thought that was really cool but then I got to the boys section and it was like Explorer and he had like a map on the wall and all of this um, like this huge map and you know you should be an explorer and you should do all this cool stuff and then I was like but wait 
why does he get to be the explorer? Why does, like, why are, like, we need to do a better job? Um, I'm using the Pretty Vulgar face powder. It's okay. It's fine. I got it in a boxy luxe box last December. Still haven't panned this thing. It's huge. I, I feel like I will never have to buy another powder again because I just don't use that much every day. But I feel, anyway, I feel like we just need to do a better job of telling young girls how powerful they are and how, like, encouraging them to do more and be more than just ornamentation, you know? Like, yes, it's, you know, aesthetically pleasing things. Like, I love pretty things. I love how pretty things are. But I also wish that as a kid, I would have been more encouraged to go out, make mistakes, like do experiments and, you know, to see myself as a scientist, to see myself as somebody who could affect change in the world, who was an explorer, who could do that kind of stuff. I, I wish more things had been geared toward, and it's not that anyone like didn't told me I couldn't. It's just that I feel people often kind of forget to, they kind of forget to give girls just as much encouragement in those arenas as they do anybody else. Um, like, I feel like young boys are encouraged to kind of make mistakes and, you know, get really, um, this is the kind of cream to powder bronzer from e.l.f. And I didn't wear a bronzer the other day and I didn't like it. But, so, I just thought that, you know, this is a really innocent magazine. Like, this isn't a magazine trying to... This like nobody's trying to be misogynistic in this magazine. Like they're not they're not saying this is only for girls or only for boys. It's just it was just an idea, but it was funny that that was kind of like the default gendered norm that, you know, boys are adventurers and girls have like pretty antique shabby chic things. And honestly, like as a kid, I would have been happy with either one of those rooms. I would have been thrilled. Would I have kept it clean? No. No. I don't clean my room now. Sorry, Mom. Um, if you're watching, Mom, I, I do clean my room. Don't tell her I don't clean my room. Uh, but my husband does that. And <laughs> so I just feel like you, we have to be better at one, giving girls more confidence and giving girls more opportunities to be that adventurer, to be that person who's affecting change in the world, who's doing, who's doing really cool things, you know, I'm just put a little bit on my nose and my chin there. Um, and not, and not necessarily, <sighs> And not necessarily try to box people in. And also to let young boys who maybe there are young boys who are more inclined to... I like doing my blush this way. I don't know why. So I like taking the Luxie uh, Pro Precision face and just kind of like stamping on the blush here. And then kind of blending it out. So this is one of the cream to powder blushes. It's from the Aqua series from e.l.f. And I love it. And I love this kind of rosy tinted color. I almost bought the M Cosmetics like liquid blush, but I feel like this gives the same effect. And this entire like compact was $3. Not saying the M Cosmetics one isn't worth it, because I haven't tried it. It probably is. I really want one of their infinite lip clouds. Um, but I feel like you get the same effect here. And so I just think we need to be better because there might be little boys who are creative and maybe they want the shabby chic bedroom. Maybe they want the bedroom that is, you know, beautiful and aesthetically pleasing and maybe they're not as keen on being an adventurer. Maybe they're not as keen on being 
that kind of, you know, that kind of person. You don't know. You might have the, you might have the next Christian Siriano. You don't know. Oh my God. Look at how beautiful that is. This is the new Makeup Obsessions uh, Mega Moon one. And I honestly, I got it because I really, really wanted to get a replacement of the Prismatic Amethyst from Becca. But the truth is, is that I did not want to spend $38. And I saw this at Target when I was getting my pumpkin spice latte creamer because are they near the same place? No. Do I walk by the makeup aisle every time I go to Target? Yes. Are you going to judge me? No. This is a judgment free zone, lady. Um, you can judge me if you want. Like, that's totally fine. I don't care. If you don't like it, I don't care. In the words of Hannah Louise Poston. So... I just feel, like I said, we need to do a better job. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again. That's okay. That's what editing is for. And being people who just kind of allow people to be who they are. To be the people that they want to be. To be, let people pursue their greatest talents. Let them pursue all of the things that they would love to be. If you want to know what it looks like, it looks like this. And it's in this packaging. I don't love the packaging. It's kind of hard to open. But yeah, I just feel like you should let people live their best life and not get into a tizzy about, you know, gender norms and not get, just don't, just don't. <laughs> like basically, just be somebody be the change that you would want to see, be the change you would want to see in the world. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking in the viewfinder because I need to, like, look at my hair while I'm brushing it, I guess. Um, be the change you want to see. I really love having short hair because it does not take that long to style. But at the same time, sometimes, it can go super wrong. The people... I want to see the Lily Singh of chemistry. I want to see the Lily Singh of botany. You know, like I want to see those people get recognition. I want to see those people being held up as role models because they are, because those are people who we need. Like, so I love makeup. I would love to know, I would love for there to be a makeup like chemist or a makeup like, uh, like a product developer. And especially like the business side of makeup, I would love to see those YouTube channels. I would love to see a show about that, a show about the business of makeup, about how somebody started from the ground up, or, you know, a show about what Norvina's um, creative process is like. And so I would just, I, that's something I would love to see. All right, guys, I have been talking for way too long. Um, I didn't put on mascara yet because I usually do setting spray and then mascara and lipstick. So um, that's kind of boring for you to see, but I just wanted to film this morning, have a bunch of opinions and drink coffee with you and talk to you because nobody's home right now. It's just me because uh, Tarek got, if you saw my Instagram live yesterday, Tarek got delayed a day because he missed his flight yesterday. It was just super stressful. Luckily, he's coming home today, so I can't wait to see him. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I actually woke up super early, like four in the morning, and I was able to, uh, for some reason, I woke up at four in the morning, just couldn't go back to sleep. So I was able to like eat breakfast, drink coffee, um, and then just film me getting ready because uh, that's what we do. That's what we do, sis. Um, I don't. I don't know why I'm talking like that. I think I might have had too much coffee. <laughs> all right, guys. I am. I hope that you have an amazing day. I hope all your dreams come true, and I can't wait to see you in the Sunday Style Guide. Bye.